citrus dominant in the nose. Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, I'm the master taste of whiskey.com. And today we have a Ben Nevis, 17 years old. Here on my cask, it's from a, well, a new independent bottler called The Malt Man. And this is the brand of a company called Meadowside Blending. And behind this Meadowside Blending, uh, stand two persons. One is called Donald Hart and his son Andrew and they founded the company in 2011 and I'm not quite sure if this Donald Hart is one of those Hart brothers which well put whiskies in bottles for decades. I'm not sure. Um, on the card box beautiful colors earth brown or or peat brown, golden, uh, the tan or the, the ochre color of uh, the barley fields, gold, wonderfully made. The Malt Man is our range of exclusive bottlings of rare old single malt whiskies, our dedicated search for gems from working distilleries and those sadly lost means each cask has been personally selected, as always with independent bottlers. Our bottlings will delight the connoisseur and excite the enthusiasts. No coloring, important, caramelization or chill filtration is used in any of our products. Donald Hart. Uh, it's 17 years old, Ben Nevis. Um, distillation date October 1996, bottling date December 2013, uh, and it was a refill bourbon cask, number 1322, 321 bottles, 46% ABV due to the non-chill filtration. <coughs> it's a standard liquor bottle as we know it for long. Uh, I like those two label designs because you're able to write something on the back and it has a cap on top uh, which states the malt man so nobody can uh, open the bottle refill it and uh, put a no-name cap on top and, and sell it as new that's important in our days <clears throat> this lovely cask of ben nevis has been aged for 17 years in a refill bourbon cask it is unchill filtered and has no added color, as we know already. On the nose, there are some citrus fruit notes with fresh cereal tones. The palate is medium bodied with some lovely cooked butter flavors. Cooked butter. Mm -hmm. coming, through, coming through, followed by summer fruits and subtle chocolate. The finish is quite waxy with heather notes and a hint of toasted almonds. <clears throat> so here we go. Citrus dominant in the nose. Very few else. But never is, as far as I know, or I had tasted so far, uh, came always out of sherry casks. So this one is untypical to have a refilled bourbon cask. And here you find the distillery character itself. Lots of citrus fruit, but the cereal notes, mm. those fresh citrus lemon notes now go over into oranges and clementines. But the real sweetness is lacking. More fruit than, than sweet. No cooked butter. 
oranges, juice oranges, and a hint of chocolate behind, distant oakiness, and the wax, no. There might be a faint honey note in this. Yeah, perhaps this is the association with wax. Some spiciness in the back, eh? And a faint vanilla. But this heather, mm, it's a little spicy, yes, but, but very faint, very decent. And the almonds. Mm. So this one has a, well, has a definite mark on the distillery character side and has less influence from the ex-bourbon cask. It has been 17 years in that cask and the, what came over was so few. So probably this refill cask was filled with some malt whiskey before for 10 years so that only a little from the cask came over. This faint distant uh, chocolate note noted on the label probably <clears throat> comes from the cask. Yeah, a whiskey which is well below the possibilities of that cask or of that whiskey. Uh, a finishing, from my point of view, would have been a good thing to in increase uh, the aromas a lot. So this is quite one-dimensional on the distillery character and very few influence from the cask. So if you select carefully every cask as gems, then this one is a, a little bit well, not enough matured in oak, from my personal point of view. Thank you for watching. There's more to come. Stay tuned and feel free to add your comments to this bottle in our whiskey database.